first, some legal analysis. Alex Little is here, criminal defense attorney, former federal prosecutor, and live with us from Nashville. Alex, big picture, what do you see here and what do you think is coming? Yeah, I think she's likely to get probation here in the next few minutes. This sort of crime at this level in the sentencing guidelines is almost always going to result in probation. There wasn't a lot of money at stake. This was, in the world of fraud, a pretty small fraud. That's not to say what she did wasn't morally reprehensible, but it's to say that these federal courts see defendants that are much, much more serious, and it's very likely, unlikely to put Ms. Huffman in prison. When I, when I heard that the, the, the federal government was asking for one month, yeah. You know, the, the last one of these that I remember, the government asked for 11 months and the defendant got probation. Yeah, and I think as a federal prosecutor, when you walk into court and you ask for a month, you've got to feel a little ashamed of yourself because what are you doing taking a case that at the end of the day you want someone to go to jail for 30 days? I mean, that's a case you see in misdemeanor court, in state court every day. That's not really the reason we have the federal government and its resources of law enforcement to prosecute people. Of course, there's a bigger picture here. And that is that, you know, you don't, you don't need everybody who's rich and famous being able to pay off for sure. SATs and get their kids into colleges and thereby keeping other people out. I mean, it just, I don't know how you approach it if not this way. Any thoughts? Well, Shep, I think the problem there is the rich and famous pay to get their kids to go to college every day. There was an article just the other day in the paper about the yeah. fact that, you know, colleges want donors, and so they want rich parents to send their kids to school and get lots of money. And I think it's very clear that if the Huffmans had, had spent millions of dollars buying a building or donating to the alumni fund, their, their daughter probably would have gotten to college that way. So, you know, when we try to enforce, this is a whole range of behavior that may be immoral that probably doesn't deserve federal scrutiny. Right. The, the only thing about that, and, and nobody's arguing with you, we all know the realities here, but it's sort of been my experience that no matter what you give, if you don't have the math grades that are the minimum of an institution, then you don't have them. Yeah, I think that's true. And, and again, I think it goes back to what, what, what's the real crime here? Yeah. The allegation is that the university was somehow how defrauded. And I think there's lots of ways that people defraud universities that really don't deserve the FBI to have your guns drawn and to come in and, and to effectuate an arrest warrant in the middle of the day, middle of the night. And what I think the judge is likely to say is consistent with the last person who was sentenced that, you know, you've got a felony conviction. That's a real consequence. Ms. Huffman's going to be a felon for the rest of her life. And, you know, in our society, that's a big deal. What, what did you make of the prosecutor's words today? The, the words themselves, not, not the asking of the time to be served, but the yeah. words themselves seemed kind of strong. Yeah, they had to be. I mean, I think the only reason you can justify this case from the federal government's perspective is to send a message, to say, hey, folks in this position, you can't do this. You'll suffer consequences. They have to consider this a crime that's being prosecuted to prevent others from doing the same thing. So the language has to be harsh, and it's, it's absolutely reprehensible. You don't want to pay to let your kids cheat on the SAT. The whole purpose of that is to level the playing field and to, to make these decisions on merit. Alex Little, live from Nashville, thanks. Uh, I know Thank you're going to you. stick around with us because this, we believe this is coming up in just a matter of just a few minutes. And Alex Little, I, I'm reading, you know, reaction coming in from okay. viewers and others on social media and beyond, and it really runs the gamut. Uh, why yeah. would they give her this time when others have gotten probation all the way up to, if this had been me or someone I know, I'd have been in for years and years. And I, I think the latter is decidedly false. Yeah, I think folks don't understand how federal sentencing works. I think there are, you know, some cases get publicized where the sentences are really on one end of the spectrum than the other, and the public doesn't know the circumstances. Here, I think the public knows a lot more about the circumstances, and I think the moral wrong of this conduct strikes people as something that should uh, result in a long prison sentence. So I think that's why you hear people on that side say, gosh, she should be the slammer for years. But I think consistent with federal practitioners or prosecutors who are in these courtrooms, a sentence of, you know, zero days probation was, would have been likely, but 14 days is, is not at all outside the ordinary of what you'd expect. I think what's interesting is how this affects plea negotiations and whether or not other defendants go to trial. I think this will actually embolden them. Um, I think that Lori Loughran and, and other defendants who have held out for trial are going to take this all the way to trial. I think they see the opportunity that even if they lose at trial, the sentence is not going to be particularly harsh. Really? Because in Lori Loughran's case, I, I think they were recommending, what was it, six to, six to 12 months? That's well, yes, if they had gone the plea route. One of the things that happened yesterday or earlier, the judge determined that the loss calculation, one of the ways we get to a sentence in the federal system is determine how much money was at issue. And the judge declared that there was essentially no monetary loss here, no monetary gain by the defendants, no real loss by the universities. And that's going to change these sentencing calculations, which is going to affect how defendants like Lori Loughran decide whether or not to go to trial.